the incredible power of asking for help. Hey ladies, welcome back. So we are on 301. All right, so I am recording this post-retreat. Um, I just walked a 10 amazing women through another leadership retreat, and these are my mastery, my soul elite clients, and oh, amazing. You always come back full, feeling like you're on another planet somewhere, and content, and your shit comes up. And then it goes and to hold that sacred space for people when, you know, we're going through big, big transformation, it's truly about connection, connection and vulnerability to speak your truth, to be who you are, to honor what you need and to go after it with a whole heart, even if your head doesn't think you should. So today I wanted to talk about um, a personal story that I have been challenged with and so, so excited um, that things are starting to shift. And you also may hear my dog in the background. He's losing his marbles. So, okay. I've been talking about this book forever, right? So 2018, my mission is to get my book proposal complete. Um, And it's not so much about pushing, pushing, pushing. There's a difference between pushing to do something and alignment, uh, and resistance. And once you start learning what your body is telling you, you can tell when something is resistance, or you can tell when you're just not supposed to head in that direction. So last week, well, people ask me this all the time, why do you want to write a book? And I say, this book wants me to write it. It's not about me saying, well, I'm just supposed to write a book because that's what people do in my industry. Or I don't know, I just looked at you know shiny object and I thought that was the next thing to do. No, this book will not leave me. It's nagging at me. And what does that mean? Well, when I tap into my gut, my intuition, I think about how long have I been wanting to write a book or how long have I been dabbling in the idea of it? And it's been about 15 years. But here's the interesting part. For a long time, I didn't believe I could write. I didn't believe I was a good writer. And when I tell people this, they laugh at me and they're like, Heather, you know, when you actually write, if you write an email, if you write, you know, a Facebook post, you know, any little journal entry that you have, it's good. It's awesome. When you talk, people listen to you. So why do you think that you're not a good writer? And I go back to, I don't know, probably when I was in grade school and I would spell my name incorrectly. Um, I had an undiagnosed learning disability and I would think to myself, I'm stupid. I can't do this. I can't even get my name right. I'm not a writer. I don't have anything to say to the world. I am not special. Now, the way you may see me may be different than the way that I see myself. And this is the beauty of asking for help. This weekend proved that we need to ask for help. All of those women were there, not by chance right? They were there because they asked for help. They said, Heather, I'm struggling with something. I'm challenged, or I just want to become the best version of myself and you can walk me there. The beauty is we can see the light in others, but we can't always see how bright our light is. And this is why I'm such a fan of community. But just because I practice this does not mean I am challenged with it as well. So back to the book. Okay. So 2018, I'm like, okay, I'm getting this done, right? So I seek out support. I get some help. But my gut tells me this isn't the right support. There's more. There's something here, right? And I kept saying, I don't know what book I'm writing. I don't know what book I'm writing. I don't know what book I'm writing. And a lot of the feedback that I was receiving from people was just keep writing, just keep writing. 
Well, if you're an ambitious person like me, I love to be creative, but I also like to know where I'm headed. And I want to know that, you know, my creating time to write is not just wasted time. And I know some of you might say, well, it's not Heather. It's a process to be creative. So anyways, my point is I just didn't, in my gut, I didn't feel like I was getting the right support. So I went out and I found somebody who, um, is supporting me and it feels so good. I feel lighter. I feel like this person is taking a stand for me. Um, and I don't have to carry the load. You know, when you're in a partnership with somebody, um, even sometimes when you've hired somebody and you feel like you're doing all the work, meaning it's, you have to do the work, right? So when my clients come in and work with me, they're the ones doing the work. But if I can see that they're like off the beaten path, I'm like, Hey, come back. What's going on? You got this. Let's do this. And I'm a huge fan of taking a stand for people, but I feel like a lot of it's a, it's a special skill and not everyone can do it. And when you surround yourself with people who believe in your work before you believe in yourself, that is where the magic happens. So I found someone to support me through this and I felt lighter. And then I said to her, I can't write this. I cannot write this proposal. I need a writer. I need a writer to help me. And ladies and gentlemen, I am divulging a deep, dark secret here. If there was a gun to my head, this is what I tell myself. If there was a gun to my head, of course I would be able to do this. This is like the number one thing that we as women need to let go of. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you have to. So... I do not identify as a writer. I identify as a coach. I identify as a speaker. I identify as many other things beyond writer. Author, sure, eventually, but not a writer. Um, Writing for hours on end a day, you know, that sounds like a horror movie to me. So I, she said, Heather, I think you need to hire a writer to help us with this project. So I found a writer, an amazing writer to help me with this project, who is also taking a stand for me, who is very experienced in this area and, um, is going to help me through this process. Now I needed help. I asked for it and here I am still struggling. The struggle is this is where shit gets real. Okay. Okay. This is when you said, I want to go skydiving. You buy all the equipment, you pay for the ticket, you are in the freaking plane and they're like, it's time to jump. You're like, I can't, I'm scared. What if, what if I fall? What if I die? Well, you're going to (laughs) fall. What if I die? What if all of these crazy things happen to me? And so what I'm noticing is I have the support now. And it's about busying myself or it's about, you know, being very intentional. I mean, it's one thing because I just got off of a retreat. Um, So getting back in the flow, being extremely intentional and focusing my energy. This is what I'm teaching you in the time and energy intensive that's starting this Friday. Um, And there's a few others as well. The highest leverage action to get you to where you want to be. So now that my energy is wandering right? I'm like, okay, yeah, you got to get back. You got to get back. You know, today's a new day from after the retreat. What do I need to focus on? And you don't need to do it all yourself. You have a support team around you. So it's saying, do I need to accomplish this or can somebody else do this task for me? This is huge because I'm noticing the pull, right? The resistance of like, Don't do that. Don't go over here. Busy yourselves to avoid this, um, to avoid, you know, taking action on this. And the funny part is that's what my soul wants. That's what my soul craves. That's where freedom is going to be. And I'm also noticing the disconnect and drama that happens when you really, and I've, I've felt this before and I tell this to all of my clients, but when you're really going towards alignment in your life and what your soul is craving, 
observing deep dramas that come up. And this could be with family members, it could be friends. And most of the time, I think it's just illusions that we create in our mind to keep us safe. So the reason why I wanted to share this with you is one, you are not alone. I am challenged too. I try not to use the word struggle because that feels like very disempowering to me. I am challenged on a daily basis with, you know, this doesn't always come easy to me. I just snap my fingers and my life is perfect. hundred percent false, but I'm a student too. And I practice what I preach. And if I don't, I will stop preaching it. And I always say, you know, come back. So this is why I'm a huge advocate of journaling and meditation and, you know, having accountability partners and everything that I teach, because when you feel a little off and you're like, okay, I got to get back on the saddle. Like what it's Monday. Like what am I doing today? Right? Like write it out. This is the energetic time management process. And I still use this strategy on a daily basis to get me to where I want to be in my life so that I can create enough space to write, so I can create enough space to um, work on my business, so I can have the freedom to be with my family and to live the life that I want and so that I can also create space for my husband and my children so that they can live the lives that they want and so that when I'm full, I can make a bigger difference in the world. So you're not alone. We all have struggles and challenges and resistance. I just use that word struggle. Let's backtrack that. We all are challenged and we all have dreams, desires, and goals. And they will, I'm telling you, these dreams and desires, they will rock your world. It's not, they're not just going to be like, Hey, Oh, I'm here. Oh. And by the way, you have six months to work on me with no responsibilities. That will never happen in your life. You will always have responsibility. And I guarantee you, as you decide that you want more in your life or you want something different, you might actually notice that the pull and the current gets a little bit stronger because the universe is testing you. And so when I'm getting closer to a goal and like so excited, like, oh my gosh, I really want to work on this. I literally watch some things fall apart around me to test me. And I say, no, I'm focused on this. That can wait. That can wait. Example, I'm about to sit at my computer and do something for the book. And then all of a sudden my dog will puke. (laughs) It's like, oh, I got to go. I got to go pick up that puke. Why? No, I don't leave it. It can stay there until I'm done. Is it gross? Yes. But it's a representation of the life that you want to be living and the conviction and the focus that you need to have in order to achieve that goal. So thank you, ladies. Thanks for listening to my ramble today. Um, My message, I guess, was asking for help. Asking for help and realizing that you cannot 100% do this alone. Um, And if you feel like you don't have the support around you, it's because you've isolated yourself. There are many free resources in the world, many free resources live in your community. We just have to look for them. People are always eager to help, but what we've done is we've kind of shut them out. So for those of you interested, um, check out the time and energy intensive. You can go to heatherchauvin.com forward slash intensive. This is a, um, it's a four month container of space, but this Friday I'm going to be teaching you the, um, the energetic time management process. So we're going to be doing it live. We have intensive times. You have one-on-one with me, you have group accountability, um, the Facebook group, all of that fun stuff. So go to heatherchauvin.com forward slash intensive. And if you have any questions, just send us um, an email at support at heatherchauvin.com.